Creating invoices in Excel is nothing new. But what about when we need to track installment payments, when we need to create multiple payments on multiple frequencies? How do we keep track of the payments when they're due? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And today, the invoice with installment plan is gonna be created. I'm gonna show you how to create your own invoice with any type of installment payment plan so that you can automatically create those payment plans, track payments, and when they're due. And best of all, we're gonna do it all from scratch. I cannot wait, so let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got a fantastic training, Invoice with Installment Payments. We're gonna show you how you can create your own invoice with any type of installment payment at any type of frequency. We're gonna create this incredible application. We're gonna create it and design it absolutely from scratch. It's gonna have print, email, invoice. You're going to be able to add additional payments, custom payments, and a whole lot more. So it's gonna be a really incredible training. So I really like the idea of this. So first, I wanted to thank Nathaniel. Nathaniel uh, had a suggestion on a YouTube comment. And of course, I respond to each and every one of your comments. He said he wants to create a system for a higher purchase company where clients will make initial payment and are given three to six months to make payments depending upon the item they bought or the amount, of course, given some considerations. So it's a great idea and I really liked it to be able to uh, change the payment system and customize it on any frequency. And so that's exactly what I've done here this week, right? So you're gonna be able to add payments, create installments based on any type of frequency. So it's gonna be really fantastic training because I'm gonna walk you through every step as we design it from scratch. So we've got multiple items, we've got pop-up date pickers here, we've got print, we've got invoice navigation, we've got uh, search for invoice, so it's really a cool training. So I hope you do like these trainings. I create these each and every week for you. And also, I want to make sure that you get subscribed and don't forget to click that notification icon bell. That's going to ensure that you get these trainings each and every week when I create them. Every single Tuesday, I create these incredible applications and walk you through every step, sometimes design them from scratch so that you can understand and learn how to build these larger applications. For VBA beginners, basic training, that's going to be on the weekends. Every Saturday, I'm now creating a short 15 to 30 minute training so you can learn the foundational basics of VBA so you can round up and get really really good at all the fundamentals and able to create these applications. So I do that for you, so I do appreciate it. A great way to support us is with Patreon. Just a few weeks ago, we created this really cool work order manager on YouTube, so that was really nice. And I added a ton of features for our Patreon members. So our Patreon members now have this really cool scheduler with full navigation, so all those work orders can get scheduled up. When we select on a work order, all the details, we can save and update those. We've got filtering, so that's just one of the features that our Patreon or YouTube uh, Silver members are getting. So I'll put the link down below. Patreon is a great way to support this channel for just a few dollars a month. You get updates, upgrades, and of course, these are all based on your ideas, right? Here we had different ideas from Larry Duffy. He had a suggestion, so we put those in here, scheduling and a whole lot. So make sure you're on Patreon. That's a great way to get updates and lots of cool things. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to create this application. We'll go rough overview of it, although I already have. Then what we're going to do we're going to start on this blank template and we're going to design it from scratch and then i'm going to go over every step of the code with you so that's exactly what we're going to do this is a relatively simple invoice we've just added payments to it so we can create a brand new invoice by clicking this button we have some default information those defaults are set up in our admin screen here so we can set certain invoice defaults we can customize the tax we can set frequencies we can then have a customer message and the really cool thing about this invoice is we have a full payment schedule let's pull up an invoice uh, this invoice here so we see we have the payment schedule at the bottom of the invoice so the customer can get the full payment schedule which is really nice we can print the invoice we can email the invoice in a pdf select it and a pdf will automatically be able to view and see that invoice as we can see it down here so that's kind of a really cool feature inside of pdf i'm going to show you how you can do that we also can create installment payments so for example if i create a brand new invoice here and i just select a customer here and I select a frequency, we're gonna start the payments on this, and then I just add some items to this here. It's very, very simple. So then let's just put in 100, 
and 100. Okay, so we have a $16,000 invoice total. We're going to save that invoice. And now we want to create a payment schedule. So maybe we want to create monthly payments of, let's say, 12 monthly payments. All we need to do is just click one button. That's going to automatically create a list of payments for that invoice, each with their own due date. Once you get paid, all you need to do is put in the paid date here and then the actual paid amount here, and then you're good to go. Just save and update that. That's going to record that payment. You can edit it. We can select on any payment. So very, very cool. We got a lot of cool features in here. And of course, those payments are also listed down here on the invoice itself, along with a lot of information. So that's what we're going to be creating today for you. So we're going to get started right away. And invoice navigation, we can search. I think that's pretty much it. You know, it's relatively simple. We don't have a lot going on on this. I do have a very basic invoice from scratch. So this is kind of like a step above that where we can incorporate multiple installment payments with the invoice. All right, so let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to the side here and I might be looking it away. I might be looking over here to make sure that I follow what we've done before. So I've got two different screens open in case you see me looking to the left. That's what I'll be doing. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the first two columns. I'm going to drop this down here, show tabs and comments so that I can format that. And we're going to give it a gray color. This is going to be for our admin. We'll be filling in some fields here. We're going to use this for our title. Some things, as you see, are already formatted just to save a little bit of time because these videos tend to be a little bit long. So we're going to call this um, invoice as you just saw. So notice the formatting and the font is already there. That just saves us a little bit of time since this is an intermediate training installment. And on the work order, I actually misspelled it and I was staring at that the entire time. You will see me misspell it. I'll try to check invoice with installment payments. I think that's right. Okay, so continue on. So that's going to be our title. We'll put in a background. I'm going to save this row. Row two, that's going to be for our buttons. Our invoice will start right about here. So this is going to be invoice. So I'm just going to put in invoice and notice that it's already formatted. That simply just saves us a little bit of time can help us. Okay. So now I'm going to start this out right here in D3. Yep. That's what I want. I'm going to put the customer in there. So I want the customer name right in E3 and that's going to be a data validation drop down list right here. It's a merge cell already. Next up, I want the invoice type. The invoice type is going to be a drop down list of a list of invoice types that are fully customizable and that's going to be on the admin screen next up is just a free cell called location you can put anything you want in there and then also i want the project name I'm going to go right here okay next up i'm going to put in that's going to be whether we're going to use progress payments i guess we're going to call, i'm going to call them installment payments my initial was called use installment payments okay that's going to be just simply yes i'm just going to put in yes that's going to be a drop down list right there then I want the start on date. That's going to be a date field. I'm going to go up here and I want the invoice date right here. Invoice date. Next up below that, I also want the invoice total. That's going to be uh, based on a formula. So we're going to put invoice total. I want the total paid next up. And then of course, lastly, I want the balance. So we'll take a quick look at that. This will be the balance. We'll just call it invoice balance. I can abbreviate that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our main invoice information here. We will be formatting that when we do everything else. We're gonna give it some colors. So what I'm gonna do for these fields, I'm gonna hold down the control and then I'm going to simply color these. I wanna give these a green background. I've got some green colors saved here. We're going to be using, I believe, this one right here. Okay, let's color these two. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to skip two rows. We need a button set here for create, and we also need add payments here. So we're going to go a little bit below that. Right on D13, we're going to put that due date. So due date. This is going to be for our payment information. Below that, I want to know the paid date, as we saw in the sample. So due date and paid date. We're going to skip some information. I'm going to put in the schedule. Notice it's already merchant centered payment amount. It's already long videos as I have to create this and of course go over all the code with you. So actual payment amount. So we have that in there. So both of those are going to be important. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to skip a row and right here we're going to put the installment payment schedule. So all in caps installment payment schedule. So this is going to be all the information we want. The first column will be that due date. We want to know notice it's already been bold already. Payment amount that's going to be what our payment amount is and then paid on. When was it paid on if it was paid? I also want to know the paid amount. I'll put in paid amount. The actual paid amount is what I want to show in here. And next up, I want to have the balance. So that's going to be calculated. Okay, very good. So we've got that information there. We'll just give it that same background color. So I'm going to hold down the control under all of these fields. 
I will give it that green. And we can put it in a background. I've got a background already set up. I'm going to go to the background, something I created with Mid Journey here, and just kind of a nice feature there. So this is what I created, the dark green one, and then I made it light and changed it a little bit. And I've also got a logo there too. So here's our background. So I'm going to insert that here, and that's going to insert that background. Okay, so that's kind of a nice background. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure the user entered fields are going to be in white, and we want to make sure the calculated fields are in green. So we're going to change that to white. So these are the ones that where users were going to enter and the invoice total, total bait and invoice balance. These are actually going to be green because we do not want users filling those in. OK, so that looks pretty good. Also, these are all going to be user to enter. So we want those in white as well. Now we can just do some formatting using a border. So I'm going to hold down the control and I want to format each one of these individually using borders. But since I'm holding down the control, then we can format them as one. So all we're going to do is just basically keep highlighting these as we want to as I'm holding down the control now I'm going to use control one and what that's going to do is going to launch the format here I can go to the border here we'll just use the standard black color which is fine outline and then I'll use a dash on the middle okay that's going to be sufficient for our purposes there that looks good okay I'll have a button set up here this will be for our invoices I'll have a single button here we'll be adding the buttons soon right after I finish up so here we can put in the borders we can just set make sure that our line color is automatic and then I'll just do all borders on here we will add conditional formatting down here for alternating rows and I want to know the selected row I'm going to skip a column here and then we're going to have our invoice information here so our invoice here all the way down let's see where I went I'm going to check my sample here I went down all the way to row 53 that's the one so 53 yep that's correct so let's take a look all the way down here starting in column J and all the way down to 53 which is exactly right there I'm just going to color that white Okay, so that's going to be our, our basis for our invoice. And now what we want to do is I want to have information for our total here. So we've got our payment schedule here. Yeah, that's it. It's already Merchant Center. This is what we're going to call payment schedule because when we send the invoice to the customer, we want to have that payment schedule. This is going to be the payment uh, number. Each individual payment will have its own number, payment number, which is kind of nice so the client knows what payment. I want the scheduled payment amount. We'll abbreviate that amount. Okay, so that's the scheduled and then the due date, due date here, and then we'll do the pay date. When's the actual pay? So the client knows when they actually paid, pay date, and then paid amount. So what is the amount that they actually paid? And then the balance. Okay. So notice that these are exactly like these. So in fact, we're simply going to link whatever's in here is going to be in here. So it's going to be nice, except for the payment number. These payment numbers are going to just set uh, 1 through 12, right? So that's really all I want to do is just set them to 1 through about 12. That's it. Now, of course, these will be hidden. If there's a value here, they will be displayed. If there's no value in the scheduled payment, these will be hidden. So keep that in mind. And I'll also add conditional formatting here. Okay, so these are going to get a light border color. In fact, I'm going to also color our header row. Our header row for our items is going to be, let's take a look inside row seven. That's where I want our, to go. So let's add that into row seven, which is here. Inside that, we're going to put in our item date. Next up, I want the item or part. I want the item description. Next, I want the quantity. Then it would be the amount and then the total. Okay, very good. So that's it. Now we want to give those a color. I just want to use a very light background color. So I'm going to uh, hold down the control and we'll also actually color the borders and the backing also on these two. So these fields are going to get a very light green. So I've got a light green saved here. I want borders all the way around here. Okay, so that looks good. So that's exactly what I want. Starting up here, inside here, I'm going to put the customer. That's going to be in row three. So I'm going to put in customer. And we can do a colon. That's going to be a customer that will just be linked. In fact, I can link it right now. It'll be linked to whatever is located in right here. Perfect. Next up, I'll have VBA handle the customer addresses in here and here. So VBA will take care of it here. Lastly, I want the project. So we'll put in project, put a colon, and then whatever's inside, I'm going to use equals, whatever's inside here, we're going to do. Okay, so when I select a customer here, I want that customer to show up. When I select a project name or add a project name, Fred's bathroom, I want it here. Okay, perfect. Okay, next up, I want the invoice number to show up right about here. So let's put in invoice number. And then the invoice number is going to be here. We'll set that. That's going to be a formula. Also, you won't need to edit anything in this header. That will all be controlled from here, which is going to be nice. Next up, what I'd like to have is the invoice date. So I'm going to put invoice date here and location. And lastly, we're going to have the balance 
due. Notice that it's already formatted there. And the balance due is simply going to be equals to whatever's located right in here. So we can start to format those. The location, again, equals is going to be whatever you put in here. And then the invoice date also equals is going to be whatever is located here. Lastly, the invoice is actually going to be invoice number is going to be in B2. So equals B2. That's where we're going to put that invoice number. It's not here yet. So while we're here, why don't we put some information inside our admin section, which is going to be columns both A and B. So I want to know when the invoice is going to load. That's going to be important. Why is that? Because when I make a change on here, I want the item and description to load up and the quantity and the amount. However, when I'm loading the invoice from a previous, I also want to make sure that we load in whatever description was previously saved. So I need to know the difference. So that's going to be true or false. It's something like that. Okay, next up, what I'd like to have is that invoice number. Invoice number, invoice ID, same thing. So we're going to put an invoice number here that's going to be in b2 so let's just say that's two or whatever and then next up i want to know the invoice database row invoice database row now that row is important why is that important because if i look on our invoice list this is our list i've only got two saved i want to know that invoice number one is on row four or invoice number two is on row five how would i know that well i've got a named range already that's going to help us it's called invoice id and that's basically just uh, going to show all is going to handle that and we're going to use an offset formula to handle that so now that we know that and we also know that it starts on row four if i want to know what row invoice number is on two which is five i'm going to use equals if error i'm going to run a match and i'm looking up this invoice number here and I'm going to look inside the name range I just showed you called invoice ID. I want zero because it's an exact match. I want to add three actually on that. Three because our first one starts on row four. If there's an error, I'm going to show empty. It's going to tell us that the invoice database is on row five, which is what I want. I also want the next invoice number. Now that next invoice number equals, we're going to use if error in case there's no date at all. I'm going to use the max formula, invoice. I know that I move fast, but you're welcome to slow it down. And I want to add one. That's going to get us the next available invoice ID. But if there's no date at all, it will create an error. But I want to default it to one to do that. And that's exactly what we're going to have. Okay, perfect. I'm going to give those a color and a border just so we can distinct those from anything else. We'll give that a blue color here. Next up, what I'd like to have is I want to know the selected customer ID. Selected customer ID. Now, how do we know what the selected? If I have a drop down list of customers, which I do, I've got a named range for our customers. If I look down here under customer name and I tab over to that, we see that we have a customer database with a list of customers. So that's exactly what I want. That customer name is going to be our named range. Keep in mind that I also have one for customer ID. So if I have a customer ID and I have a customer name, what I can do is I can index that. So the first thing we want to do is add some data validation here. And we're going to put in a list and we need that customer name. So equals customer underscore name. That's our named range. And now we see that we have a list. Okay, great. So we have Betty White here, but we want to know the ID of Betty White. If I look in my customer list, I see Betty White has an ID of one. So how are we going to arrive at that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use equals. We're going to index. We could probably wrap it in if errors. Always a good idea. Index. What am I indexing? I'm indexing that customer ID. And I'm looking for a row. What is that row? I'm going to base it on that customer name. So I'm going to look up Betty White here. I'm going to look it up in the customer name named range here. I want an exact match and I want column one. If there's an error, we'll just put empty. Okay, that's going to tell me that uh, Betty White is customer ID one. Perfect. I want to know what row Betty White is on. That's going to help us extract the email address. If I know the row and I know the email address is in column H, then I can simply extract that for our email. So that's going to be kind of nice. We could also index the email. There's a few ways to get it. So I want the selected customer database row. And that's even easier. All we need to do is we can match it based on the ID or based on the name either way. So we're going to use if error again. We're going to run a match. This time I'll look based on that customer name here. And I want to look up that customer name just as we had here. So the customer name. And also I want an exact match. Again, customers start in row four just like we did with the invoice. So I'm going to add three. If there's an error, I'm going to show empty. It's going to tell me that Betty White is on row four. If I look in our customers, I see that Betty White is on row four. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to leave a space here in case I want to add a new customer. I want to put in the next customer ID, maybe for Patreons. We'll have the ability to add in new customers. So I'm going to give those a little bit of a distinct color. These are for our customers. Okay, next up, I also want to know the search. We need to put in our search invoice, which is going to go right here. So I'm going to put inside Q search invoice. Okay. 
And then I want to give this a color, which is our standard background color here. And I want to give this a white color because this is where users will enter the search. And then, of course, I'm going to enter the borders around there. That's sufficient enough. I'm going to add buttons here. So when I search for an invoice, I want to know if that's an accurate invoice number. How do I know that? Well, what I can do is I can put the search invoice database row. What is the database row associated with that search value? So equals if error, I'm going to match. Again, just like we did before, I'm looking up here. What is that invoice number? And I'm looking it up inside our invoice IDs. And then I'm going to put zero. I want an exact match. If there's an error, put nothing. That's going to actually I'll put in the row number as necessary here. I just need to know that it's accurate. So I know that it's on there. Okay, that's perfect. Also, let's know the pay schedule fields. We need to add some here. I want to make sure that this should be white actually. Start on the user will enter this. So these are some required fields. If we create these payment schedules, I need to know that we have the frequency, we need a frequency here actually, and the number of payments. So we need two more here. Let's add these in. In fact, I'm just gonna copy these down here and then I'm gonna paste the formats one more, pasting those formats here. And then here I'm gonna put in the frequency, which we need. And then all I want the number of payments. So there's some required fields here, number of payments. Okay, I need some required fields. The frequency is required, the start on, and the number of payments are all required if I'm going to be creating those payments, right? So I need all three. So I want to make sure that before the user presses or after they press it to make sure that they've added the frequency, the start on, and the number of payments. So how do we ensure that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in pay schedule fields. I want to know just by counting equals count A, how many of these fields have been filled out, holding down the control because all three of these are required right now. It's zero. However, if we add in a frequency, let's go ahead and do that. Data validation here. You're going to add in that frequency drop down list. list here. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to put in frequency equals. I believe that is. If you're not sure, we can use F3 to double check that. F3 will tell us. We can look down here and we can see that uh, frequencies is the correct name. So that's what we want to do. Clear that out and then click OK. So what that's going to do is list those frequencies. So now we see that it's going to be one. Okay, giving those two unique color just to differentiate between everything else. And okay, so that looks good. So now we want to know this is going to be a date format. This is going to be the number of payments. And so we want to make sure that all these fields get filled out. I want to make sure that this is three. Okay, next up, I want some information for our payment information. So we're going to start that on 11 here. And I want to know the selected payment ID, selected payment ID. Now, each individual payment is going to have its own ID. If we take a look at our invoice payments, we see that each payment has a unique ID, the invoice number that's associated with that payment, the payment number, like which payment number, that's important. So we can keep track of individual payment one, two, or three. We want to make sure that this is not accurate. I'll be updating that. I want to know the customer name, the payment amount here. So we need that. And also, I want to know the due date here, the actual payment amount, the pay date, and the row. So all of that is very important. We also want to keep track of the pay date and of course the row that's associated. So I do need to update this payment number. They should be unique for every single invoice. So we'll be getting on that. And I'll be updating that. Although it's not pivotal, everything still works without that. Okay. So what I want to know is I want to know is selected. When you see a list of payments down here, when I select on one, I want that payment information to be displayed here. When I make a selection, whatever payment ID is selected, I want it to go right here. So let's just put in 35 or something like that. I also want to know the next payment number. This is what we're going to be working on next payment number. So that's going to be important. And what we're going to use is we'll just use count a for now. So I want to know that equals count a how many payments there. So we'll use the large number because that's going to be for any individual unit plus what? So that would be the next available payment number. So if I've got a payment listed here and here and here, this should be a, a general, not a date format. Then I know that there's three payments already. I know the next payment number is going to be four. Okay. All right. Continuing on. I also want to know the database row that's associated with this. So this is going to be our payment database row. And again, we've got a payment ID. So I'm going to use equals if error. I'm going to run a match just like we did before. I'm going to be looking up this payment ID. And I got a named range just for that, as we do always. Payment ID. That's our payment ID, all those unique payment IDs. Let's put in zero here for that exact match. I want the row number, so we're going to add three as they start on row four. 
then if there's an error we're going to put empty okay so that's going to tell me right there there's an error right here payment id so we want to match so the payment id in b11 so let's make sure we have that payment id let's take 15. okay so i got 15 on row 18 let's double check to make sure that everything looks good that's going to be our invoice payments we see that we have payment id number 15 and that's going to be on row 18 that's exactly what i want perfect next up i want to know the next payment id so what's that going to be next payment in case we have a new payment id so the next payment you're going to use max formula equals if error using max max formula payment id here plus one if there's no data we're just going to revert to one and so our next payment id is 23. if we look on our invoice payments we see the last one's 22 the next one's 23 that's exactly what we want okay continuing on we move back inside our invoice here and then what we want inside row 15 i want the next payment number i think we got that we don't need that and i'm going to create the pay schedule i'll keep that one empty for now create pay schedule so basically what i want to do is I want to differentiate between when we're adding a brand new payment manually or when we're creating all of them at the same time. Basically, I want to differentiate between those. So that's it. This one we're going to keep empty for a while. I had a duplicate there on my sample, so we don't need that. I'm going to give those a distinct color so that we're going to use those for the payments. And I'll use this yellow. Okay, so these are associated with payments. These are miscellaneous. These are for our customer. This is for our invoice. Okay, everything's organized. We're ready to add our buttons now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert and I'm gonna get one button exactly the way I want it. And then we could duplicate it from there. So we're gonna move on to this here. And I don't need an outline on that. So I'm gonna use no outline. I'm gonna pick a unique color, which we're gonna use this color. And I want, of course, a font color. We'll use the white text. And we're gonna call this new invoice. Okay, what we'll do is we'll format it just how we want it. And then I think I can bold that. So we'll go back and uh, we'll bold it here i'll write justify it and put it in the middle here and then we want it a little bit bigger here okay so that's sufficient for our purposes here and i think i'm going to set the height at about 0.27 or 0.28 that's fine okay great so the icons are last after we create all the buttons then we add our icons so we've got new invoice here i'm going to use Control d and that's going to duplicate it and we're going to use one for our saver update so this is simply going to be called save invoice keep it simple saver update so we can do save invoice or save or update. I'll do save or update so that we know. Either one is fine. Save, update. Okay, so we're going to use that same macro for both saving and updating. And lastly, we're going to duplicate that. And this one's going to be for our delete. So we're going to call this delete invoice. We've got enough space, so it's no problem. We can make buttons a little bit larger. I want to save room for an icon, so we'll need that on both on this and make them a little larger. We also want to make sure that they're lined up so we can do that holding down the control, making sure that they're lined up. Okay, so we've got our buttons here. Again, icons come last after we create all the buttons. So now what I want to do is I want to duplicate these. So I'm going to use control D and now I'm going to duplicate this. These are going to be for our payments. So I'm going to bring this right down here. So we're going to call this add payment. We'll adjust the size of the button. And then this one's going to be called saver update which is fine and then we're going to call this delete payment sometimes i don't necessarily like to have buttons with the same name so in other words both of these shouldn't probably be saver update even though because this one's saving or updating payments this one's saving or updating invoice so we can change this to save invoice just to make sure that people don't get confused save invoice and this would be for payments we'll create something similar so that we can always make sure the user knows exactly what they're clicking and what they're doing okay perfect i like that this things are looking very good on that now what we want to do is i want to create a single button using Control d i'm going to put it up here this is what's going to create our installment payment schedule we've got a lot of space so create installment payment and then schedule payment schedule okay so that's going to create and we can just make this a large button so we have enough space for everything and add a t onto that okay create installment payment schedule making sure i got the spelling right which i rarely do okay perfect so now we've got these buttons set up and i want to create some buttons on the right side and i'm just going to control d one more time here selecting on the outside not the text on the inside i'm going to bring it over here and then this is going to be for our print invoice so we'll just do print invoice and i want another one for the email invoice then i also want navigation for previous and next that's going to be a different button style so this one will be for our email i'll bring it down here email 
okay very good so lastly i'm going to insert shapes here and i'm going to use these arrow keys here this is going to be for our previous and next i'll just bring them down here for now i want it like this again i'll make it about the same height which is about 0.27 we do want to have some text in there so i'll line them shape fill this one's going to be called next invoice and then I want to make sure to format that to maximize the text. So reduce the padding. Control one is going to help us do that. I'm going to go into the text options here, here in the text box here. I'm going to remove all margins here, get rid of all of that. And then I want to make sure that it's centered here. Then I want to maximize the button uh, width here. So about 0.6, I think should be fine. We'll increase it just enough to get the text. Okay, so now that we have it just about how we want to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up here and I'm going to use Control D. It's going to duplicate that. We're going to use this for our previous. So I'm just going to change this to previous P our previous invoice. Okay, now I just need to switch it. So all I need to do is just go to the rotate here and then flip the horizontal. Okay, so that's going to be good. And I'm just going to bring those, line them up. All right, very good. Just the way that I like it. And I'll make sure this button height should be 0.27. And this one looks a little bit different. Okay, I guess they're both the same. All right, continuing on, what I want to do is I want to make sure they're in the middle here, bringing them down here. And we're ready for our icons. Now we can browse for our icons. So what I'm going to do is to insert and then let's get out of there. Pictures, we want them over the cells, this device. And then what I'll do is I'll enter. I've got a bunch of icons here. I'm going to use all of these except this one here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I can hide them all. And then I'm going to click insert here. Also, while we're thinking about it, I got a little bit of a logo. So let's insert that logo right now. And then this device and that you just saw that logo right up here which is right here, kind of an interesting logo. Now we can bring the logo up here and also we'll use our selection tool and I wanna make sure to size, so I'm gonna reduce that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply use our selection tool and I'm gonna make sure all of these are 0.2. So reduce it really small, which is fine. And then we'll set, oops, too small there. I wanna make sure that I only encapsulated those icons and nothing else, none of the shapes there. Setting those picture formats to height 0.2, the width will automatically adjust. Now that we've got that, we can then move them over there. And this logo here, we'll just shrink this down here to something reasonable and then move it over here. We can turn off our selection tool here. Now we can start to position our icons here and we can bring them over here. So first thing, what we want to do, the print, we're going to bring that up here. That's going to go over that email, a little bit hard to see because it's kind of white. That'll go here. And then our delete and then our scheduling here component, we'll bring that over here. And then we're going to be duplicating some icons because we're going to be using the same ones for both adding new and saving. So this is going to be for our scheduling here. This is going to be for our saving. And I'm just going to do control D because it's going to be used for both our payments and our invoice. The same thing with the delete and same thing, control D here. We're going to use this for both here and then we'll size them up for our delete. And then this one also for new again, control D. And then we're going to add a payment. Okay, great. We can zoom in a little bit and now we can set our sizes accordingly and we want to make sure that we can group them accordingly. So we'll check our button sizes. I'm going to hold down the control here, make sure in the middle, group them, do the same thing here. And we'll do this for all the buttons in the middle, group them. And then we can increase the width of this to make sure that we have enough room for the icon. Okay. That's looking good. Also group them doing the same thing here making sure that we have enough space in the middle and then grouping them going back up here. We also want to make sure that we set size, but don't size or shape. So we're going to set that in a minute in the property section. As I hold down the control, each one and group them individually, we'll then group them together, which is going to be kind of important. Okay. So now that we have them, uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're all even. I want them adjusted, right? Distribute them horizontally and then group them. We're going to do the same thing with these here holding down the control to make sure they're all in the middle. These quick access toolbars really help for those things and grouping them together. Okay, very good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down the control and I want to check the properties here and I want to make sure here that we're moving, but we're not sizing. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I want these also aligned grouped together. Oh, let's uh, update these. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can get a look at these two buttons. Then we'll be assigning macros to these and I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. We're just about done with the entire screen design. So it's been fun. And then we'll get into functions, but I'll go step by step so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, very good. So now that we have all three of these grouped, I'm going to line them up in the middle, make sure that they're spaced, bring them down accordingly. That looks good. I do want to set these also, make sure that when you regroup, you reset that property value. 
Okay, continuing on, let's bring it back to 100%, zoom and see where we're at. Okay, things are looking pretty good now. We've got everything done. Let's go ahead and add some conditional formatting, saving our work, should have done that a lot longer ago. One more thing I wanna do is just a little bit of a shape here. I just wanna put a box around this section right here with a thin line. Oops, let's bring that right about here. Of course, there's gonna be no fill on that. So no fill on that. And we'll make sure the border colors are consistent with our theme, which is this color. And that just kind of groups our payments together so we can see how that is together. Okay, very good. I like that. Things are looking good. Let's add some conditional formatting. Now, when we have payments here, I want the payment ID. If we remember correctly, invoice payments, everyone has an invoice let's just say i've got these payments going in here and inside our invoice i want to put these ids here so let's say we're going to have that information here let me turn off i've got some formatting and i want to turn off that notice it said custom i just want to bring it to general okay so we have our due date here our payment so we're going to bring in those ids all that information is going to come directly in here so i want conditional formatting in here i want three different rules so i'll go over those rules with you so the first thing is we can just highlight that go to conditional formatting, manage rules, and we're gonna create a brand new rule. And there's gonna be two conditions on the first rule. So we're gonna use a formula and it's gonna be equals and, and what the first condition is, I wanna make sure that due date's gonna always be required. So we'll make sure that we have a due date. So D18, but it's gonna be for every row around. So we don't want to use absolute on the row. We wanna use dynamic, it does not equal empty. So that's the first rule, it's not equal empty. The second rule is mod. I wanna use even rows, which is the mod of row two equals zero. So that's even rows. So what do we want when that is? I'll color that white. So we'll give that a fill color here and we'll give it a white color and I'll do a border around that in the bottom left and right. So I'll use our standard color. I use a dotted line and I'll use the left, the bottom and the right. So those are the two conditions. We're gonna click okay. We'll just make this a large number. So we'll do nine, nine on the row. Okay, that's sufficient. Okay, so now we're gonna use one. I'm gonna edit this rule, just make it a little bit faster. I'm gonna copy this. I need a rule for odd rows. So I'm gonna do new rule here, use a formula, and I'm gonna paste it in. Odd rows is gonna be for one, so I'm gonna change this to one, and then close parentheses there. Formatting, almost similar, except this one, we're gonna use custom color. Now the colors that we've been using are only available inside let me show you that again. They're only available in the fill effects. So I'm gonna use this light green right here. I'm gonna use the same color, right? Click okay. Now the borders are gonna be exactly like we did the white. I'm gonna choose our color here, dotted line on the left, the bottom, and the right, clicking okay. So the only difference is these are for odd rows and clicking okay. So then also we want to make sure the applies to is the same as before. So I'm just gonna copy this applies to and paste it up there. I want one more rule and that's gonna be for the selected row. So I'm gonna add a new rule. And I'm going to use a formula. And again, it's going to be two conditions equals and. And I want to make sure that the two conditions are this. One, I want to make sure that C18 and any row associated with that, so all the rows below, does not equal empty. There has to be an ID there that's associated. Next up, I want whatever's the payment ID in B11, I want to make sure that that is equal to whatever's located in C in any row. Now, any row, make sure that we get rid of the dollar sign. So those are the two conditions. That means whatever payment ID, if it's found, we're gonna give it a color. So I'm gonna give it a unique color that it stands out. So the font is gonna to go to bold and it's gonna to go to white. Next up, what I want the fill and I'm gonna go into the fill effects and I wanna give it, uh, let's say these two colors right here, these darker colors, clicking okay and okay. Okay, so that's exactly what I want to look like and click okay. And then the applies to should be the same as before. So I'm gonna click applies to and paste and click apply and click okay. Okay, great. So the idea is this. When we add information in here, put in a date, it could be anything. It doesn't matter. So we see how that our conditional formatting. Now, notice that this is three. When I change this to three, we want that row to be highlighted. Exactly. So we see that there's a mass. So that's the conditional formatting. We're looking for the match, and when it's found, it's highlighted. What we used to do is we used to select a row, but I found a, another shortcut that reduces code using this, so I like this row better. Okay, very, very cool. So what I'd like to do now is I want something similar down here. So I'm simply gonna copy this, and I'm gonna paste it right down here, and then we're gonna paste the formats here. Now, it's not gonna be a date, so what we're gonna do is I do want it colored background white, and I want this to be general, but those conditional formattings, it's gonna be a little bit easier. I can now manage those, and now what we can do is we can update those. There's gonna be no selected row, so we're gonna delete that. So basically what I wanna do is use similar rules, but this is gonna be column J. So we do need to update that, and it does start on row 42, which is correct, but we do need to change this to J. So we're gonna change that to J, clicking OK. And we're gonna do the same thing for here, edit rule, and then we need to change the applies to. So this is gonna be J. 
clicking OK. But otherwise, the same two rows apply. Now, the applies to simply is going to start in J42. It's going to go for all these rows here. These are going to be what the customer sees. Copy this and paste it here and then apply. Now, actually, what we can do is actually I want to set it to column K. I got a better idea. Column K. The reason is I want to put the numbers always there, but I don't want the numbers visible. So I only want data in column K. And I'll show you what we're going to do. It's kind of a cool trick for column K. So the idea is this. Click OK. OK, and then apply. Everything else looks good. OK, so there's a scheduled payment amount here and here and here and here. So that looks good, right? But what I don't want is that let's say there's four payments. I don't want these numbers to show up. I, I want them there, but I don't want them visible. So how do we do that? That means if there's nothing here, then don't show this. So that's the idea behind this. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into conditional formatting, add a new rule, use a formula. And this is basically the formula. So when K42 equals empty, then what do I want to do? Now it's going to be any row, so we need to remove the dollar sign there. 42 equals empty, then what is the format? I want to set the format, and we're going to go to the number format. I'm going to customize this. And what I want to do is I want to change this to two semicolons, which is going to hide those numbers. Click OK. And I just want to make sure that the applies to is only for J, which is correct. So now we see when we add values, the number shows up. That's exactly what I want. Perfect. However, the information that we have here is simply going to be linked. This is always going to remain consistent. The scheduled payment amount is going to equal what? It's going to be equal to whatever is in here. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to go down about 12 rows here, which is what we have. I'm going to copy this. And then what I want to do is I want to paste the links. And that means so whatever payment amount information shows up, oops, I need to change that to zero, not empty. What do I mean by that? Notice they showed up. Why? Because there's a value now. Look, there's a value. So what we really need to do is on the conditional formatting is change it. Instead of empty, it should be does not equal zero. It should be zero, which is good. Click OK and click Apply. And perfect. Now when we add information, look, E18. So when I add information to E18, let's say I add a payment amount here of 15, we then see the one show up. If I add another one here, 15, we then see it. And that's exactly what I'm, what I'm saying is, I think uh, it's just a preference of whether, yeah, on the sample I did it. We will keep these alternating even if they contain no data. So it's kind of nice. I'll just keep the colors the way they are even if there's no data, but I definitely don't want to show that. Okay, that looks good. I like the way that that looks. Now what we have, we've got our conditional formatting set up. We're going to save our work. Inside, we need to add some little bit of formatting on these columns. I want dotted line on the inside of these. So we're going to do that right about here, updating it right to this. And I want dotted lines on the separator of the column. So format control one will launch this. We're going to just going to simply add those black dotted lines on the left, the middle, and the right, clicking OK. I want the entire invoice surrounded by a thick border, so we're going to add that around. And then control one to do that. And then what we want to do is we'll put that thick border all the way around clicking OK. All right, so our invoice is looking pretty good. We need to add some total information. This area right here is going to be where our message is, the end of our invoice and our total. So I'm going to format that. We're going to put this line border up at the top. That looks good. Here's where I want the information. So I also want a line border on the right here. That's going to separate. So we've got this large square for a good uh, customer message. This customer message, what's it going to be? I want it linked. So I want it linked to whatever we put in the admin screen. Where's that admin screen? It's right over here. What do we want? It's customer message right here. I want it linked right to there. So it says, thanks so much for your business. Perfect. Here's where we're going to have our total information. So I'm going to put in the sub total here. I want to put in the tax information. That's going to be a formula. What is that going to be? Now let's take a quick look inside there. I've got some tax information. Are we charging tax? Yes or no. The name of this is called charge tax. I got a tax name. We can put any tax name we want. It's called tax name. And I've got a tax rate, so it's 10%. So knowing that, we can put in some kind of a custom tax information. So equals if, it's going to be a formula, and let's go up here so we can see it. If the charge tax, are we charging tax, equals no, then what are we going to put? We simply put nothing in there, right? Then nothing. What if we are charging sales tax? If we are, then I want to know the tax name. And I want to put in something else. I want to put in the percentage of that tax. So and, and I want to put it in here in parentheses. So I'm going to use quotation marks, the parentheses, and I want the tax percentage, the tax rate. Now here's the tax rate, but I kind of wanted it formatted it. So let's use text because I want to format that. And I want to give it a specific format. So we're going to use 0.00 percentage. That's the format that I want. We need to surround that in quotation marks. 
Otherwise, it won't work. So we're going to add them in here and here. Okay, great. And what else? I want to just end the parentheses. So and sign the end parentheses here. And then that's it. Okay, so let's take a look at that and see how that works. Let's finish that up. Okay, so perfect. So we've got here a charge sales tax note, tax name. So we see here, it's going to show GST 10%, which is exactly what I want. If I decide to change this to 9.5, it's going to show just as, oops, let's put this drop down that one. That's what I want. Okay, so now what we see is going to show 9.5. That's exactly what I want. So now again, we need another formula here. We need to know what that is. So let's put in some information here. I need some information here and I need the total here. So equals if again are we charging sales tax charge sales tax equals no then just put in zero which is fine no then zero otherwise what what is it we're going to charge the tax rate then tax rate times what is it times the subtotal which is going to be right here that's all we have to do okay there's no total there yet but we'll get to that okay next up i want the total the total is simply going to be the subtotal plus the tax so equals the sum we can do that here just the sum of these two values here okay great so that's our total i also want to know the total payment so total payments we abbreviate that and then where's our total payments i'm going to put them all the way up here this is going to be right up here total paid right here okay great so we have that there now what we're going to go is the balance i want the balance so we're going to put in the balance or balance due. I think balance due works better. Balance due. So what does the balance do? It's simply going to be equal to the total minus the total payments. Okay, perfect. So we don't have any data in there, but we'll get there. I'm going to format that. So again, you can use control one or you can use formatting the cells. And we'll just add some borders around there. So this border right here should be sufficient and this border dotted line here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Saving our work so far. All right, we got a few more things to tidy up here. I want a dotted line on the column here. So we're gonna, again, control one, put that dotted line on the right side, which is here. And of course, we're gonna need item. What item do we need? We've got some items and parts here. Got a bunch of information here. You know, to get this list really quick, I used a really cool application that I built this called get table data. This is in the AI tool pack. I've got six different features if you want this. So what I needed is a bunch of parts and I didn't want to have to put them all in. So I just put in something like construction items include name, description, and price. This should be uh, amount by the way. Okay, so I just select here and then all I need is just click get table data. And with this AI tool pack that I developed, I'll include the link down below. You just wait a few minutes and even less few seconds and it's going to come to you. You'll see the processing. And then what it's going to do is it's going to get a number of items. Now you can also request a number of items too, which is kind of cool. So here you see you've got a bunch of uh, items and just automatically brings it. If you were to ask for more, ask for a number of items, it will do that. So that's just one of six different features, get table data. So that's kind of a cool thing I wanted to show you. All right, so we do have an item name in here. So if we go into the formulas, name manager, and we click on the item, and we see that we have item name and that item name is the drop down list that I want to use for our invoice. So we're going to close this up, go back to our invoice and we're going to hold shift control there and we're going to add some data validation. So data, data validation here and we want to use a list and it's going to be the equals item name, Oops, underscore name. Okay, so that's it. We move along. We can also remove these grid lines. We don't need them anymore so we can get rid of those. Now we can select on them and that's exactly what I want. We can also start typing it in and it's going to come up for Excel 365. Uh, automatically it will use autocomplete, which is kind of cool. Finally, it took many years, but here we go. So I really like that. So that's automatic. We used to have to include the list down below in the same column. For updated versions of Excel, you don't need that anymore, which is a welcome upgrade. Okay, great. So we want to put in an item date here. I'm going to have a pop-up calendar here. Why don't we add that in right now? Format looks good. So when I select on something, I want a pop-up calendar. I've got one here that I'm going to use. I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to bring it in here and we're going to be using that soon once we get VBA activated. Okay, let's take a quick look. We need the invoice total. I need some formulas here. The invoice total is simply going to be equal to whatever the total is right here. So that's our amount. Okay, so that way if we put in one, we need a formula here. So if I put in 10 and 15, I want a formula that's always going to be constant on this invoice that will automatically total this up. So equals if, 
I only want that to appear when we have an amount and a quantity. So equals if two conditions, the quantity does not equal empty, and I want to make sure that the amount does not equal empty. When those two conditions are true, then I want something to happen. Then I want to simply multiply the quantity times, of course, the amount. That's all I want. If either one of those is empty, then I'm going to show nothing. Okay, we need an and here. Almost forgot about that. So, and that's what I want the condition is. So there we go. So if it's false, that's what we're going to do. So that's exactly what I want. I'm going to take this formula, copy that, and bring it all the way down here, and then pasting that in there. So control C, going down here, and then paste the formulas here. That's what we're going to do, pasting these formulas. Okay, good. So now as we add in data, we want that to automatically populate. Perfect. So we want to make sure the subtotal is here. So that's going to be equals the sum of basically everything up here. So that's perfect. And enter. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Let's fix that up. Subtotal sum of what here? A little too fast on those. Bringing them down here. Okay, very good. Now that we have that, I also want the balance due equals, that's gonna be in several different places. I want it right here. Okay, I also want the balance due, the invoice balance. This one is actually going to be calculated, so we should color that in green, giving it that green color here. Invoice balance is simply equal to whatever the balance is. So we have it calculated in multiple places, which is what I really want to see. So I've got it here, here, and here. The total paid is gonna be simply equal to the sum of what? all of the paid amount here. So everything all the way down, we'll just use a large column here. And that's the total paid. Okay, very good. So now we have the total paid. So if we were to add $100 onto that, we would see that our invoice balance is simply equal. So everything checks out just the way we want it. Perfect. We've already told the payments. So we've got the total payments. So everything is looking really good now. Saving our work so far. Number of payments is just gonna be a general, should not be a currency here. That's exactly what I want. Monthly, we have that. Use installment payments. Yes, we do want to use installment payments. This should be a yes or no. Data validation here, and then list here, and then yes, comma, no, that's sufficient. And then click OK. All right, so that's exactly what I want. Now we can probably add some conditional formatting down here. If it's no, maybe we really don't want to see anything here. So what do we want to happen? If it's no, we don't need any of this here. So I'm gonna add some conditional formatting. So we're gonna go into the home, manage rules, and then we'll do a new rule and use a formula. And it's gonna simply be this equals no, right? So if it's no, we don't necessarily need to see those fields. So I'm gonna format those. We don't wanna give the user any ideas. I wanna give it a fill, fill effects. I'm gonna use that standard background color. And I also want to click OK. And I also want to give a number format custom. And we'll give it three semicolons because we have text and numbers. So we're going to click OK. So the idea is this. Let's apply that and click OK. So when, when I click yes, everything shows up. Clicking no, nothing shows up. OK, yeah, I do like that. That looks very good. OK, continuing on. So we have the invoice type. This is going to be a drop down list. We do have an invoice type in our admin. If we go into the formulas name manager, we take a look inside our invoice type tabbing over. We see that it's called invoice type. That's what I want to have as a drop down list. So we'll go into data, data validation one more time, listing. And this is going to be equals invoice types invoice type not types i think that's right okay very good so now we've got a drop down list of invoice types location is just a free form east side and uh, project name use installment we'll put that as yes here we've got the invoice date let's check that format on that okay so things are looking pretty good i really like the due date 115 checking all the formats those look good 115 just the way that i want them what we do want to do is let's change this to a date 115 here it's paid a few days late 120 and then the balance now i got to get the balance so here's what's going to be a formula so it's going to be equals our invoice total minus whatever this value is. But of course, we don't want it always. We only want it if there's a value here, invoice total, and if there's a paid amount, right? So we only want that. So let's put in if, basically we'll use two conditions. I wanna make sure that the invoice total is not equal to zero, and I wanna make sure that the paid amount to the left is not equal empty. So only in those two conditions do I want the value. Otherwise, we're just going to show empty. So that's exactly what I want. Because when this gets removed here, I don't want anything to show up there. Okay, so now for the subsequent balance, basically it's going to be this. So if they make another payment here, I want the balance to show up respective of this 
and this. So it simply equals this minus this. However, again, there's some conditions that we want to add in. So it's going to be if I want to make sure two conditions. One, this needs to be above zero or non-blank, does not equal empty. And what other condition? This also does not equal empty. Okay, so those are the two conditions. We need to add the and in, that's very important. And so those are the two conditions. If it's true, this happens. If it's false, we're just going to show empty. Okay, great. So that means if this gets removed, so does the balance. That's exactly what I want. Now what we can do is we can simply take this and we can copy it all the way down here, however long we want. We'll just go to here and we're going to paste the formulas in here. Okay, very good. So that's what I want. So as we add in payment data, then so does the balance here. Perfect. Okay, so now all this information is very, very important. But what I would like to have is also that exact same information on our invoice as well. So we want to make sure that it's linked. So how do we do that? So again, we've linked the paid amount here, but the due date, I also want to link. Again, the due date is going to be here. So I'm just going to go down 12 rows in here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste the links in here. Perfect, and it's already been formatted, which is kind of nice. So that's exactly what I want. The pay date, when it was paid on, is gonna be right here. So again, I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna paste the links in here. Next up, I want the paid amount, which is gonna be here. Again, 12 rows here. Maybe for Patreon, we'll do subsequent sheets for longer papers, and pasting the link in here. There we go, just to make sure I got that right. Pasting the links in here. Okay, now the balance, again, is simply gonna be doing exactly the same thing, copying, and then pasting the links in there. So it's always going to be linked. Okay, perfect. I like that. That's looking really good. Now, what's next? One of the things that I saw that I kind of don't like really, you see how we have a border here, but it's not here. Our conditional formatting is taking preference on the border. So what we can do is we don't need conditional formatting on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the borders manually, which is fine. And then we'll remove them borders from the conditional formatting. So when I put the borders in this black dotted line, we'll just add them in here and then remove those from our conditional formatting. Because you see this thick black border, we want this to encompass the entire invoice but it's not why is it not let's zoom in here i just want to show you that you see because our conditional formatting is causing that so we need to remove the borders from the conditional formatting very easily going in here managing those rules and then what we'll do is we'll edit that we'll go into the formatting here we'll go into the border and we'll just simply clear it do the same thing for the other one clicking okay and then we're going to edit the rules and then formatting those and then going into the border and then clearing the borders clicking okay and clicking okay now we can also have that border here so now that's perfect. Notice how the black line, that's what I want. Add again, manually add those in, which is fine for our borders here, the dotted line. We can then add them inside here and we're good to go. So now we've got a good consistent look. Our borders are now showing up, which is exactly what I want. Okay, very good. So our invoice is looking good. We are almost ready to make this thing happen and cause some really cool things to do that so I can get to that. All right, let's just take a quick look. Everything looks good. We can update the borders here just a little bit. I just wanted to update on the total here. I just want to customize the borders a little bit. Other than that, I think we are good to go. I'm going to add the double border here above the total here, and I'm going to put the solid below the total. That'll give a better look. Okay, good. Saving our work. Now, what do we want to do? Well, let's get this calendar. When I make a selection on a date, I want this calendar to appear here or here or here. So let's check the cells that we want. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into VBA and start making some of these things happen. Next up, when I make a change on here, I want the item description to load up here. When I make a change, or when I make a selection change, I want that to happen. So let's get into the VBA and start making that happen. We're gonna go into the developers, Visual Basic. If you don't have that, of course, you can also, oops, came up so quick. You can also use Alt F11. Let's see that shortcut there. That'll get you into the VBA. Now I've got two sheets open. I've got the sample, which is on my other screen here. So we can close that up, make sure we're working on the right one. And I also want to focus on the invoice sheet. Now I've got a lot of code here. It's all been commented out. So I'm going to bring this down here so you can see it. I'm going to use control A and I'm going to uncomment this code out so that things actually work. Now the first one is I want to focus on the selection change event. When we make a selection change, I'm going to bring this up. We need this so much more. Okay, zooming out a little bit. Continuing on, so when I make a selection change, I want to put some code in to help create that calendar. We're going to set the calendar as a calendar. If it's visible, I want to hide it. In other words, whatever they select, I just want to hide it. I want to show this to you. When I make a selection on anything, notice it got hidden and that's what I want. However, when do I want it to show? When I make a selection on a date field, invoice date, start date, uh, due date, pay date, right? So when I make a selection on these or any of the item dates, I want that calendar to show up. So that's gonna be based on some cells. 
if the user makes a selection change target range they've made a selection change on any one of these fields h3 h7 let's bring this down so you can see both at the same time h3 h7 right e13 e14 which is right here e13 e14 or anything from j8 to 34 i want that calendar to show up we're going to run a macro called calendar show i don't want to get into this macro this is not core to the trading but basically this macro simply shows the calendar so when i make a selection here that calendar is going to show up right in the cell below when i select something that data is going to show up so very cool it's working just the way i want it when i make a selection here or here or here or here okay very good so we see that that's working okay that's the selection change event and that's going to get our calendar working just fine now when i make a change here i want something to happen what do i want i want the item description to load i want it to extract the item i want that item description to come here i want the amount to come also in and i want the default quantity to set to one when i make a change so how do we do that well that is going to happen all the way up here on worksheet change and i'm going to focus on item change that's the one i want to focus on item change meaning if the user makes a change anywhere from k8 to 34 k8 all the way to k34 all the way down here and i want to make sure that b1 is false this invoice load must be false there's two types of change when i load an invoice meaning all the items come from the database populate this invoice that's one type of change or the other type is when the user actually manually makes a change when we're loading an invoice this will go to true so that means i wanted to grab the description of whatever was previously saved with this invoice that's what i want so that's very important so that's exactly what we're going to do we want to make sure that b1 is false if b1 is false then we can continue what we want to do is i want to know the database row if i have an item here lumber i want to know what row lumber is on i want to know it's on row six i want to find it because once i found it i can take column c and i can take column d and then i can populate column l and column n with it and that's exactly what we're going to do if it's not found it could create an error and therefore we wrapped it in on air resume next and on error go to zero so we're going to extract the item database row that's a long variable that we've defined up here once we have that we're going to look in that named range called item name we use that named range when we populated the data validation list we're going to look in the items database we're going to look for it and we're going to extract the row into the item database row if it's zero that means the item wasn't found we can exit the sub if it's not zero column l is going to populate with the description that is going to be found in column c column d is going to move over the value is going to move into column n and then of course we're going to set the quantity to one so we're going to do those three things l is going to take on the description from c m is going to set the default quantity to one and n is going to take on not the hourly rate the item amount item amount you can see this is from an old training i recycle these trainings as you can imagine perfect so we've got that so that's what happens so let's take a look and see how that actually works when i make a selection of an item that description populates the default quantities to one and the value goes so very very easily and our formula of course is going to populate it and we can just double click on this and that's going to populate that so changing the quantity automatically updates the balance okay perfect so we see how we have that now i've got a few other change events when i change a customer i want the customer address to show up here if i double click on betty white i want betty white's address to show up here so how do we make that happen well that's going to happen on a change event on e3 and essentially what we want to do is i'm going to look to make sure the customer database row if i know the customer database row located in b6 based on the customer i look in the customers and i know the address is coming from column c or the city the state and the zip are coming from columns d e and f so that's the information that i want to display either in address or in the city state and that's exactly what we're going to do so let's take a quick look up here on invoice change load customer address and city state and zip okay so to do that it's going to be a change to e3 when we make a change e3 we also want to make sure that e3 is not empty okay what i want to do is i want to check b6 b6 is very very important that's the customer database row if it's empty that means we do not have a correct customer row and therefore we need to let the user know otherwise as long as it does contain a value we're going to set that customer row into a long variable called custom row coming from b6 then what we want to do is k4 k4 that's this one right here is going to populate that address it's going to populate directly from whatever's located in our customer's database column c which is our address one however k5 is going to populate with three different items the city which is in d the state which is in e 
and lastly the zip code which is in column f so all three of those are going to populate inside k5 and that's exactly what you saw now keep in mind that happens regardless of any change so when an invoice load no matter what happens is going to be changed in here so we can see that any change to the customer automatically updates both the address although the address is the same for every customer I had to put that there because even fake data YouTube was flagging and thinking that they're real people so that's why the phone numbers and emails now look the same I can't even use different ones anymore so we get the idea that everything's the same okay perfect so that's working just fine let's take a look at what other changes so let's take a look inside because we had one more we have customer change we have item change and lastly we have invoice search change so invoice search change is the other change event when I make a change to R1 what do I want to do when I select on that I want an invoice to load simply by entering that is going to load the associated invoice and you see the payments loaded here that was a change to R2 so that's exactly what we're going to go we're going to go over all the steps for that when we make a change to R2 as long as R2 is not empty what we want to do is I want to make sure remember remember here in B8 we added a really cool formula here that's going to let us know now R2 got cleared out which is fine there was a database row here that was associated with the search of that invoice let me show you that one more time so I'm just going to stop it because it's going to get cleared out okay so it stopped which is correct so now we see that we know that invoice number one is located on row four so we know that if I look on the invoice and I look at four we see invoice ID one so we know that it's there so as long as we have a correct row I'm going to take this invoice number here I'm going to put it directly inside b2 that's going to automatically populate that same database row and we know we, we can load that invoice so we can continue on with the macro let's remove the stop and continue on and we see that we want to do two things b2 is going to take on whatever's r2 whatever the user entered in r2 is going to go directly into b2 and we're going to clear out r2 we're going to clear out the search letting them search for another one and lastly we're going to run a macro called invoice load great so that is exactly what we're going to go over now invoice load bring it down here i've got two modules that we're going to go over this one is just for the pop-up date picker calendar which we don't need i've got the payment macros and the invoice macros so the invoice macros is the first one we'll go over and i'm going to skip just to the invoice load because i want to go over that first because that's the one that you just saw happen so what do we do when we load this invoice first we want to make sure that b3 b3 is critical that's the associated row with the invoice we want to make sure that it loads accordingly without that invoice database row we can't load the invoice so if it's incorrect or it's empty we're going to let the user know with a message box and then we're going to exit the sub we're going to turn off application screen updating that's going to make things a lot faster as long as we make sure to turn it back on before the macro ends we can't exit the sub without actually turning that back on we're going to set the invoice load to true so b1 is going to go to true we're going to clear out a bunch of cells located with the invoice we want to clear everything out we're going to set the invoice row it's a long variable to whatever's in b3 that's the database row we're going to run a loop from 2 to 10 and this is going to use data mapping so we're going to look from two all the way to 10 i'm not loading these up not this one customer id i think this should be column nine okay so 11 yeah that's exactly i don't want to load the customer id either so i want to load from here to here so i want to take all this information why not the customer id why not the invoice why not any of these because these are all calculated what does that mean they're calculated by the formula i don't want to take this customer id three and i'll put it in cell b5 why not if I look in cell B5, we see B5 is a formula, right? We don't want to erase that formula, okay? So that means I only want to send the customer ID to the database, but I don't want to bring the customer ID back into the database. So that's important. So the idea is this, right? From two to 10, I want to look in each one of these cells. I want to look in H3 and I want to take the invoice date and I want to put it in H3. I want to take the customer name and I want to put it in E3. And I want to do that for all the way up to column 10, which is the number of payments. So that's exactly what you saw just happen. So that's it. That's the loop here. Now, what we want to do is we want to load the invoice items. That means I want to know all of them associated. So here's all the invoice items that are associated with this invoice. We have a database called invoice items. So I'm going to look at all these invoice items. There's only two invoices. And I want to look only for those that are for one. I want to create a criteria, which is here. And I want those invoice items to load here. I then want to take the invoice items. I know the row that's on. This is the invoice row. 8 through 13 is the same as here. 8 through 13, the same number of rows here. So we know the row that it's supposed to be on in the invoice. So that's very important. We've saved it there. So that's exactly what we're going to do if we have some criteria here. This 
is based on B2. You see how it's linked. So what we're going to do is we're going to run an advanced filter. We've been over this before, but I'm happy to go over it with you again because there's a lot of new people. So welcome if you're new. And I want to know only those invoice items for invoice ID. It is only those items that I want to load here and I want to bring those into our invoice right here. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to focus on our invoice items. We're taking our focus directly to that invoice item sheet. We're going to determine the last row as long as it's greater than three as long as we have at least one row of data we can then run our advanced filter so we're going to check if it's less than four we're going to exit the sub that means there's no invoice items we can't move on we're going to run an advanced filter here of original range a3 through i that's our original data we're going to run a criteria advanced filter n2 through n3 that's the invoice the results are going to come p through v so that's where we're coming we want to bring those results column v is where we're going to determine the last result row column v is required so the last results row is eight so now what i'm going to do is run a loop from three all the way to eight i'm going to determine what row on the invoice i should put it here i'm going to extract that then i know to put in the date the part the description the quantity and the amount and i know exactly what row i put it in row eight or row nine I'll put it in row eight or row nine here okay so that's exactly what we're going to do and it's going to come directly from the invoice item so let's walk through it now so if it's less than three that means we have no items for the given invoice and we can skip and go to no items which is going to go here now what we're going to do assuming that we have items we're going to run a loop the result row equals three to the next result row so this is our loop so the first thing i want to do is extract that invoice item row to the row that i need to put it on the invoice and it's going to go into this long variable called invoice item row it's going to come from column u then i simply need to bring the item information in j through n of the invoice equals p through t what does that mean p through t all the way here is going to move directly or copy directly into j all the way through n lastly the total right we don't want to affect this is the formula we don't want to change anything there i want that database row what is the row of the database and i want to put it right there and that's very important because if i add a brand new item that doesn't have a data when i save this invoice any changes that are on these rows it's going to update but if there's no database row it is going to update that and add a brand new one so if i click save which i'll do in a moment I'll, after we add it we're then going to update that row and then lastly we want those database rows in column p that's what you just saw and that's going to come directly from b so if we look on our invoice items we see that database row in column v now all that's going to come directly down here okay very good so that's on the invoice next up what i want to do is i want to load the payments we're going to get into this in a minute i want to focus on the invoices so this macro here which we'll get into is simply going to load all the payments that are associated with that we'll get into that in a moment we're going to set b1 to false and turn on application screen updating okay very good so now we've got it loaded up now what we want to do is we've got some brand new buttons we need to assign some macros so let's do that too so i'm going to hold down the control we've got a macro called new invoice I'm going to do right click and assign a macro and I want just this workbook only and I want to focus on invoice new which is here this one's going to be save invoice so holding down the control again n and this one and this is save or update so we're going to go right down here to invoice save or update lastly invoice delete we're going to do n here and then invoice delete okay very good while we're at it let's assign these here so I'll assign all the macros that are associated with this this one's going to be previous invoice so we're going to look down here to previous right here previous invoice here okay next up next invoice here we're going to sign that and then we'll just type in next it'll be a little bit quicker next invoice clicking okay all right so next up i want to be able to print the invoice so we can assign it to the entire group that will assign it automatically and that's going to be called print so we'll just type in print invoice and click okay lastly email invoice here so we're going to end here and then just type an email and then this is invoice so it can be found right here invoice email okay very good so now we can save that so far we also want to assign the additional macros which is just these four additional buttons create installment so again right clicking on here and that's create payment schedule that's sufficient adding a payment when we add a payment holding down the control and this is going to be payments and then add new so payments here and then what we want to do is we want to add new so we're going to click right here next up save and update which you just saw we will add that payment save and update down here okay continuing on now we want to delete a payment so we want to add that one and this is going to be payment delete and i think that's all the buttons we have so payment uh delete is right here clicking okay saving our work so far always a good idea 
now we've got all the macros assigned. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new invoice. So when I click this, it's going to clear a bunch of fields. It's going to set the defaults. So that's a new invoice. So how do we make that happen? So we're going to go back up also staying inside our invoice modules. We're going to go to the top and we're going to look at invoice new. This is the one I want to focus on right now that you saw just run. Once all the cells associated with the invoice, of course, not the formulas are cleared out. We can then set the next invoice ID. If we remember correctly, we have a max formula located here in B4. We want to take that next invoice ID and I want to populate B2 with that so that we can prepare. What that's going to do is going to populate this. We are also going to populate any location that's put in. So it's automatically going to link up and display on that invoice as soon as we set that next invoice ID. I also want to set the current date to the default in H3. That's going to take on that current date. December 12th is the current date. Next up, I also want to make sure that we set some defaults. If we remember correctly, here inside the admin screen, I've got some new invoice defaults. I've got an invoice type. I've got the progress payments. We can probably set these a little bit up differently. I just want to, I'm a little bit picky when it comes to that. And I want to set these to this dotted line. Okay, so what I want to do is I want the invoice type. We can set whatever invoice type. If I change this to maintenance, I want to make sure that that maintenance appears on all brand new invoices progress payments, whether we're using them or not, the frequency and the number of payments. That way these fields can be automatically set. So if we can set some defaults, of course we can leave them blank if we want. So I basically want to populate all of those from the admin screen into their respective cells on a brand new invoice. So that's all we need to do with invoice. So if I decide I want to click it again, we see that, oh, let's reset that. I had it in break mode for a second. Resetting that, then what we're going to do is we're going to go into new invoice and it's going to automatically populate maintenance now, invoice monthly in 12 and the current date. So we see everything is set to false. Great. The next macro is when we're going to save or update that. If I create a brand new invoice, I want to be able to save that invoice or update an existing one. We can add some values to that. We can set a customer and we want to be able to save that. So we can set a location, make sure everything's working good. Let's just put east side here. And then the project name would be, let's say garage remodel. Okay. So once we have that, I also want to then make sure that all of our fields are properly populated inside our invoice. We have a balance due, which is correct. No payments on that. We've got some information on here. Everything's looking good the way I want it. I want to be able to save it. So clicking this is going to save our update. First thing we want to do is we need to know, is it a brand new invoice or is it an existing invoice? We also want to make sure that our required fields are populated. So customer is required. I want to make sure that E3 contains a value, or we can also check to make sure that B5 or B6 contain values. When we're saving an invoice, this is the macro that got tied to the save invoice. I'm going to check for those required fields. E3, I want to make sure that we have a customer. If it's empty, we're going to let the user know through a message box to please be sure to add a customer. Okay, we're going to turn off application screen updating to make things quicker. We'll turn it on before the macro ends. If B3 is empty, we need to know if it's a new invoice. There's no database row that's associated. That's going to mean we need to add a brand new invoice. So to do that, we need to get the first available invoice ID and the first available row on that invoice list. So we're going to look inside the invoice list sheet here and get that first available row, which is row six. So we're going to put that into a variable called invoice row. And it's going to be the invoice list, the first available row. Inside column A, I want to take that ID only for new invoices, that brand new invoice ID, and I want to put it directly into column A. So we're going to do that as well. I also have some formulas here that's going to be for the total paid and the total balance. And I want to put those formulas in here. They're located here. We're using a sum if I want to know all the payments based on an invoice number. And we're also going to use if error, we want to make sure the balance, which is simply the invoice total minus the total paid. That way in our database, we always have the total paid amount correct. And that's going to help us when we want to create dashboards in the future. And we also have the correct and accurate balance. So very important. Okay. So we want to make sure that these formulas are populated. We don't want the formulas in here if we don't have any data. So I want to take the formulas from columns M and N and paste them directly inside the respective row. So that's only for new invoices. So A is going to take on that new invoice number. I'm going to copy cells M1 through N1, which is both our total paid and our balance formulas. And then I want to paste them into the respective row. And then we're going to turn application cut copy mode. This should be false, not to equals copy. I want to turn that to false. Okay. So we're going to turn that off. 
Turn off those dance hands, turn off. Continue on, if it's an existing invoice, I simply need to take the invoice row from whatever's B3. So all of this gets done if it is a brand new invoice. However, if it's an existing invoice, all we need to do is capture the row inside a long variable called invoice row. Then once again, just like we did on invoice load, we are doing reverse data mapping. And that means we are simply going to take whatever's inside the cells and paste them into the database so here is the database right here invoice list we're going to take whatever is inside our cells we're looking this time in row one i'm looking in these cells here row one and whatever's inside f7 i'm going to put it directly inside g and the respective row like five in this case so that's all we need to do here this is called data mapping so i'm looking for that range here and I'm going to look inside our invoice sheet here and I'm putting it inside the database invoice list, the associated row and column. So we're simply looping. And now when we're saving, I'm going all the way to column 12, which is right here. So it will include the customer ID and it will include the invoice total. However, we do not load the customer ID and we do not load the invoice total back into the invoice. So that's why this one here goes all the way to 12. However, when we loaded, down here, it only went to 10. So we want to differentiate between when we're loading and when we're saving. Okay, great. So here's how we save the information we loop. Now, what about the invoice items that are associated with that invoice? We need to determine all the invoice items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in this column and I'm going to look for the last row. So in this case, it's eight. But if I decide to add more, right, we want to make sure that we're adding not the same item. So what I want to do is I want to look for the last row. I'm going to look at that. And then we're going to run a loop from eight to the last row. I'm going to look in column P. Has it been saved before? If it has been saved in the database, this will be populated with a number, a database row. If not, then we need to add a brand new one. So the first thing we want to do is get that last row. That's going to be the last item row. So we're going to look that last item row, column K, all the way from 34 on up. So this is 34 all the way up. We're going to get the last row. If the last row is less than eight, that means we have no items so we can move on. However, if it is not, then we can loop through the rows, the item row, starting at row eight, all the way to the last row. I want to look in column P. If it's not empty, that means that it's existing. However, if it is empty in this case, that means it is a new database item, new invoice database item. Okay, so we want to then add that to the first available row. And this is our invoice items here. I want to add it to the first available row. Once I do, I want to put that invoice ID in column A, the date, the part, the description, the quantity, the amount, the total. For brand new items, I also want to put the invoice row and I want to put the database row. That database row is simply a column. So just like that, we're going to then take the first available row and we're going to take that row and I'm going to put that directly inside column P. The first thing I want to do is I want to put that database row inside column P. So P and the invoice item row equals the item database row. Next up, column A is going to take on that invoice numbers. As I had mentioned to you, A will take on that. Next up, the H will take on the invoice row and I will take on the database row. So H takes on the invoice item row. I will take on the database row through a formula. What if it's an existing item? If it's an existing item, all I need to do is extract the database row directly from column P because it would not be empty. And that's what we're gonna do right here. Now all we need to do is a single line of code just to take all the items that are associated all the way from J through N and bring it over and make sure we are saving it directly in the associated row right here. So it's gonna go for B all the way through G. So B through G equals J through O. That's all we need to do is just save the information. We're saving the total as well. Okay, great. So that's all we need to do to save an invoice. And then we just want a message box invoice saved right after we turn on application screen updating. Very good. Invoice load, we already went over, so we can skip that. When we're deleting an invoice, we want to make sure that we do two things. I want to check to see if it has been saved before. If it has not been saved, if I delete this invoice, it, we haven't saved it, so we can just add a brand new one, simply clear it out. However, if it has been saved, like it is in this case, I want to make sure that we are going to remove the associated row. So how do we do that? Well, First is, are you sure you want to delete this invoice with a message box? Yes, no, or exit sub. In fact, let's go ahead and add a new one and then we'll delete it here just so we can see. We'll set a customer on this. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have cleared it out. And then we'll set West and then project uh, garage. And then we'll just add this new part just like we had last time. 
anything will do because we're going to be deleting this we are going to then save that to make sure that we have it working it's now saved we have a database row that's associated with it if i decide i want to add a brand new item here i can do that and then that database row will be saved with that and we see that it's now saved if we look inside our invoice list we see that we have a brand new one right here if we look inside our invoice items we have two items that are associated i didn't assign any dates to those so that's fine if i did decide later on to assign a date it would work just fine by signing a date and then saving that invoice again you would then see that inside our invoice items that they would populate with a date okay very good so we also want to delete this invoice so how do we do that well first we let the user know to give them an option to leave if b3 is empty that means the invoice has not been saved yet we can skip all the way down here and go right down here however if it has been saved we're going to focus getting that invoice row from b3 and then deleting the entire row from the invoice list that deletes the invoice list right here however it doesn't delete the individual items i still need to get the items so to do that what i want to do is i want to know that invoice id come from b2 i want to extract all the items associated with that and I want to clear the contents of all the individual rows and then resort the list. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to determine the last row. We're going to run an advanced filter just like we did when we load it. We are going to then have our criteria. We're going to determine the last row based on column V here. Then if their last row is less than three, that means there's no items here. We can escape out of there and go to no items. If there are rows, what I want to do is I want to look in this database row. If I'm deleting this invoice, I'm going to look at row 10 and I'm going to clear it out. Not delete it, I'm going to clear the items out. 11, 12, I'm going to do that for each individual row, not deleting it. So the, here's what we're going to do. We're going to extract that item database row from column V. I'm going to then clear the contents all the way from A through I of that associated row. Once I have that, I'm going to end up with a bunch of rows that are just clear, and I don't really want that. So by resorting the list, we can remove the blank rows. So to do that, we're going to run a sort, clearing any sorts that might exist, based on A4, because I want that invoice ID, ascending, meaning the lowest first, and all the way to column I, and that's going to apply the sort. So that's going to clear out all the associated rows. That's it. That's all we have to do. Previous invoice, relatively simple. I think we're going to go quickly over that because I want to get to the payments. We're kind of running out of time. All we really need to do is to look inside our list here, determining the previous. Let's delete. Let's just make sure that's working okay. I'm going to delete invoice. Do you sure you want to delete it? Yes. Okay. Making sure it clears it out. So we got the new one. Let's check our invoice list. Three is gone. Let's check our invoice item. Three is gone. Perfect. Okay. So things are working good. Okay. So for previous invoice, all I want to do is basically look to the previous. I'm going to look here. If it's found, I want to go to the previous one. So all we're doing is reducing this number here, B2, and then loading that invoice. But if we're at the first one, we just need to put a caveat, you're at the first invoice. If we do next invoice and we get to the last one, we're at the last invoice. So that's all we're going to be doing here. I'll go quickly over it. We're simply reducing the number or increasing the number. Next invoice simply increases the number end value and then we're simply going to place the id inside b2 is going to take it on so basically we're just reducing it or increasing it print invoice all we're doing is printing it out we're going to set the print area to do that we're going to highlight all the way over here and then what we're going to do is i'm going to go into the page layout and we're going to print area and we're going to set that print area now when i run the macro to print it's going to print that and hopefully it'll be on a single sheet so it's going to print to that default printer and when I click here, it's going to say you're at the first invoice. Okay, that's the wrong macro assigned to that. That is not going to help us at all. So assigning that macro, invoice print. I don't know how we got that wrong one. No worries. Invoice print is what we want. That's what we're looking for. And so here, click OK. And then print that invoice. It's going to print the invoice. Snag it's my default printer. And things are looking pretty good. That's exactly what I want to see okay very good so the print's working good email let's go ahead and take a look at that email all we're going to be doing is setting the alloc mail to the object we're going to email as a string subject and file path we may need that determine the customer row if the customers are empty we want to make sure that the invoice has already been saved we also want to make sure that we have a customer before emailing because we need to grab that customer email address how do i get that customer row it's going to come from b6 right b6 is our customer row if we know the customer row and i know that the email is on column h what i can do is i can extract that that's exactly what i've done the email to is simply the customers 
column h and a customer row that's our email address this i'm going to probably add in patreon maybe i'll add some email templates in there so emails are going to be a big part of the patreon update on this i think along with of course any of your suggestions so this will be used for that we'll set the file path i want to create a pdf i need a file path for that so i'm going to set a name a distinct name it's going to be the current path of the workbook wherever it's located plus e3 this is our customer name plus an underscore plus i also want b2 b2 of course is our invoice id invoice number so that's going to be that unique a name for our pdf however if it, for some reason it already exists we will need to delete it so i want to check if the file path directory does not equal empty that means it exists already into that name we should delete it so we're going to kill the file path then what we're going to do is we're going to create the pdf based on that export as a fixed format pdf based on that file path that we set false false we don't need to open it up or anything like that setting the outlook app for the outlook application we're going to create that outlook email this is a very simple email two emails going to be the two we're going to keep the subject and the message empty and we're going to attach that file path and so that means all we do need to do is when i click email invoice it's going to create that and so there's nothing here nothing in the subject and we've created a pdf we take a look inside that pdf and let me zoom out a little bit then the pdf is kind of probably should put fixed to one page right so the pdf is a little bit different i'll get that fixed up before i send it to you so make sure that the pdf when it prints we want it on a single page however when we did print it to our standard printer it did print so we kind of make sure to fit to one page that's kind of important make sure that that works that's it so emails relatively simple okay let's focus on the payments before time runs out i want to focus on the payments so when i select on a payment i want whatever payment information to load up so how do we do that so let's take a look that's going to happen on selection change right when i select on a payment whatever the information is i want it to load in these fields so let's take a look at that now inside the invoice payments it's going to come from this database i've already got some data mapped here so b2 is that invoice number b12 is a payment e3 is the customer name h13 e13 h14 and e14 so these fields here are mapped to the here this payment amount let's center that so it looks a little bit more consistent and so we want to make sure that we're populating when i select on our own i know that database row i'm going to take whatever's here and put it in h13 i'm going to take whatever's here e13 h14 and e14 what does that mean that means determine the database row if i know that database row is four i'm going to take whatever's there and i'm going to put it in e13 e14 h13 or h14 so that's how we do it okay so if i decide i want to make an update to this and i want to say they've only paid uh, less so they pay only 820 on this and i want to save i want to make sure that that gets updated and then automatically it gets saved in here okay perfect so how is that going to happen well it all starts with selection change event when i make a selection that payment information is going to load so let's go ahead and take a look at that selection change inside the invoice so and that's right here and it's going to be the worksheet selection change so we already went over the calendar but now the last thing we wanted to focus on is that payment item if the user makes a selection change from d18 all the way through h in a large number just starting right here d18 and then all the way and i want to make sure that d contains a value so to check that as long as d and the target row value is not empty what do i want to do i want to take that invoice id we know the invoice id is located in c i want to put that directly inside b11 so b11 is going to take on whatever's in c in the target row that's the payment id then we're going to run a macro called payment load and that's going to be inside our payment macros here so the first one is going to be payment load list we'll get over in a minute payment new payment load this is the one i want to go over with you then we'll go back up to the top payment load that's going to happen remember on selection change so first of all i want to make sure that b13 is empty if b13 which is our database row very important if it's empty right the user has not selected a correct payment or something so please select correct payment to load and we can exit the sub putting that payment row inside the long variable from b13 we're going to run from four to eight remember there's only four fields that i really want to put here so that's all i need to do those four fields are going to come from columns four let's see invoice payments here from column four to eight so we want to run that so how do we do that here e3 all the way probably could be five to eight here five to eight is, is sufficient five six seven eight yeah we don't need a customer name that's not necessary so i'll change that five the schedule payment amount the due date the actual all four of these fields five to eight populating that so how do we do that let's change it to five day we don't need four customer names already there but i do want it saved okay so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever's located in the payment row in the payment column we're going to populate the 
invoice sheet. We're going to look in the range here. I'm looking in H13, E13, H14. That's where I'm placing this or this or whatever's here. So that's what we're doing. Just again, using data mapping. Very simple. Okay, very cool. So that's how we load it in. Let's go back up to the top of that module here, our payments module. And the first thing, remember I said when we load an invoice, there's one macro that we didn't cover. Remember, let's take a look back on here. Invoice load, I said we'd cover it, which we are. So that's the invoice load. So previous invoice, invoice delete, invoice load. There was one macro, which is this one right here called payment load list. Run the macro to load the payments. So now it's time to go over that. And it's the first one here called payment load list. And basically, all we're going to do is clear this list out, whatever's here, not the formulas that are located in column H. We need to keep those. So clearing out all the way up to column G, we want to make sure. And I want to run an advanced filter. I want to look in the invoice payments. I want to know all the payments that are associated with invoice one. I want to create the results and I want to load them accordingly all the way in here. So whatever the results are, bring them in. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So again, we're clearing out and we're going to include B17. I want to make sure that we are clearing out. What is B17? I'm looking at nothing. I mean, it was an idea I had, I guess it, whatever it was. Nothing there, or it's the wrong one. So we're going to clear that out. Nothing's in B17 for now until I can remember. We can just basically clear it out. Now, sometimes we may want to clear out the select payment ID, but I think it's okay to keep in for now. It's fine. Okay, continuing on. So what we want to do is clear out all the associated payments. We're going to focus on that payment sheet, determining the last row, uh, making sure that we have the values in there, if not exiting the sub, running that advanced filter, as I had just mentioned, inside the invoice payments. Our criteria is M2 through M3. Our results are going to come here. So just another advanced filter, no different than what we've done before in this training, determining the last result based on column Q. Then if the last result is less than three, we'll exit the sub. Bringing over all the information, very simple in one single line of code. So basically all we need to do is C18 through G plus 15 because our data starts on row 18 here, our data starts on row three here. So we need to compensate for that by adding 15. So basically all we're doing is taking this data here and bringing it directly inside this, right? So starting with C all the way through the paid amount and we're bringing it over here. So that's it, just bringing it all the way in. Perfect, now it's gonna be inside the order in which was added, which is exactly what I want. Okay, now new payment, relatively simple, clearing out a bunch of information. When I click add payment, simply clearing out these fields here is all I really want to do. I also want to take the next payment ID and I'll put it directly inside of B11. To do that, B11 is going to take on B14. Okay, now when I save or update a payment, first of all, I want to check for the required fields. I want to make sure that we at least have a date. If I try to save or update, please make sure to enter a due date and a scheduled payment amount. Those two are required. So I want to put in a due date. Let's add a new one, add a payment. I want to put in a due date if I want to put in a manual payment and a scheduled paid amount. So we can do that here. Okay, so we can put that in. Now we can save or update. So if I want to save an individual payment, if I want to add a new one, it's going to add a brand new one right at the bottom here. And it's going to let me know the payment was saved. We need to know, is it a new one or is it an existing one? When I add a payment, if I know there's no database row associated in B13, then I know it's a new one. So that means if B13 equals empty, it is a new payment. I'm going to get that new row, take that payment ID, and I'm going to put it that next payment ID, which is in B11, and I'm going to put it in column A. So we want a unique item for that invoice payment, put them right here. And this isn't correct. This should be, well, I'll make sure that's fixed. By the time it gets to you, these will be populated. In other words, it should look like this, right? If all the payments or numbers are here, I want those payment numbers associated look just like this. Okay, so that's an easy fix. Next up, what I want to do is I want to add that formula inside column I. That is only going to be for new payments. So when I look in here, column I should take on a, a formula. So that's going to be important when we delete it. Next up, what I want to do is I want to make sure that if it's an existing payment that I want to make sure then the row comes from whatever's in B13. So existing payment will take on uh, payment row. It's going to be associated there. Next up, running a loop from two to eight this time and whatever's inside, we're going to from two all the way to eight and we're just going to populate these fields with whatever's in B2 we'll put here, whatever's in B12 uh, we'll put here and so on and so forth. Invoice number is correct. Uh, payment number is incorrect. For the next one, we want to make sure that they're populated and unique so we can have unique payment numbers. But I think it looks pretty good the way it is anyways, just a slight difference. Continuing on, so we're going to run that data mapping and that's going to save all of that information from our payment information into our payment database. Next up, so there's two things that happen. The list gets reloaded and we get a payment save, right? When I save that payment, two things are going to happen. Let's put in another default value here. 
and we'll put in some information here. So when I save it, two things are going to happen. You'll see two things. One, the list gets reloaded, as you can see happening now. And two, the message box appears. Now, I only want this to happen, but if I create installment payments, that means I'm creating a lot of payments at one time, right? So when I do that, I want to make sure that I don't have that message box and I don't have this list reload every single time. So we really want to make sure it only populates exactly when we finish that. So it's just a differentiation and I'm going to show you exactly why. So basically if B16 equals false, B16 will go to true when I'm running this create installment payment schedule because I might be creating 10, 12, 20 different payments at a single time. I certainly don't want a message box 20 times, right? We don't want a message box 20 times saying save, save, save. So basically that's why we're differentiating between the two different types of save. Okay, that's it for payment saved and payment load list. We're reloading the list. Payment load, we went over that. Payment delete, very easy. All we're simply going to be doing is deleting the associated payment. We're going to grab the row from B13. We're going to delete the entire row and we're going to reload the list. So if I select on this one, I want to delete this one. Deleting the payment, are you sure? Yes, it's going to remove it. It's going to reload the list. Now it's gone. Okay, perfect. So we see delete. Next up, and lastly, is creating the payment schedule. So let's create a brand new invoice in which there are no payments for that. So we'll create a brand new invoice. I'm we'll select on a brand new customer here that we haven't used. Fred should make his appearance today. And then set a location. Let's just put it interior and we'll give it a project name and then just do washing carpets. Okay, so we've got that. And now what we'll do is we'll just add some information here. We'll, we'll set lumber, I don't know why, insulation and plywood here, whatever, roofing, insulation. Yeah, that's handy for carpets. Okay, so now we've got some information here and then we wanna add 100, we wanna make it a large one. Okay, very good, so that's quite a sizable job there. And then, so we're gonna save that invoice. We've got all the required fields, so the invoice is now saved. What I would like to do is I'd like to create payments. Do I want to use? Yes. I'll start the payments. Let's say we'll do it 115. And I want the, to give the client the ability to make 12 monthly payments. Oh, we've done that before. Let's just do um, let's do weekly payments. Yeah. And we'll do 24 weekly payments. Okay. So that's going to give us a little bit uh, more freedom there. So now what we want to do is I want to create a payment plan. So we're going to do, oh, let's stick with 12. Keep it there create installment payments so they have to pay 12 times weekly and that every week they have to make a payment so we've divided that now now you see 115 122 129 25 so every single week they're going to owe another payment so it's a large uh washing the carpets job apparently okay so so we see how that we got that so how do we make that happen so, so notice that we didn't have that message box come up every time and we only had the list refresh and we have new item rows assigned to this, which is exactly what I want. So let's go over that macro. That's the macro I just ran. The frequency is gonna be a string, the balance due as double, and the payment amount is double. I need to know the invoice balance, which is here, and I wanna make sure that I understand because I need to split that up into how many number of payments. So if I know they owe 12,500 and I divide that by 12, I need to know that it's gonna be $1,049.38 per payment, very important. So those are double variables. And then we have the payment number and the number of payments as long, the start date and the due date as date variables. So we wanna make sure that they've saved it. If B3 is empty, that means they have not saved the invoice yet. So we wanna let them know to please save it first. Also, I wanna make sure that there is an invoice total and a balance above zero, right? So they can't make payments if there's no balance. So I wanna make sure if they're either one of zero, then please make sure the invoice total and balance are above zero. And then also I wanna make sure that this says yes. I wanna make sure that we have a frequency, a start on, and a number of payments. All of those are required to do that. So that means that if B9, remember we counted these fields, this, this, and this, and we put them directly in B9. We know if one of them is missing, and I try to create an installment plan, please make sure to add a start on date, frequency, and number of payments set up, use progress payments, yes, before creating, right? So there's something missing here, and then we're letting them know because this is less than three. So that's what we're checking. If B9 is less than three or F7 does not equal yes, I wanna make sure that used installment is set to yes, okay, in case they accidentally press the button. Then we're gonna let them know. We're gonna turn off application screen updating. We're gonna put that frequency, a string variable, whatever's in E8, whatever that frequency is set, in this case, it's monthly. Start date's gonna be an H7. We are also going to set the balance due is gonna be an H6. So I wanna put that in there. And also the number of payments is gonna be an H8. And now what I wanna do is I wanna know the payment amount. The payment amount is simply the balance due 
divided by the number of payments. That's going to set that payment amount. Once I know that payment amount, I also want to set B16 to true. Remember, I need to determine when we're creating that pay schedule. This must go to true and then back to false so that we don't have the message box each and every time. So B16 is going to go to true. We're going to run a loop. The payment number equals one to the number of payments. We're going to run the macro that's going to clear all any existing payments that might be there. Anything that might be there, we're going to clear. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate E13 with the due date. Whoa, nice spelling there, Randy. Okay, so due date is going to be in E13. The scheduled payment amount is going to go into H13. So that's up next. H13 is going to take on that payment amount. So payment amount. Once we have that, we also want to then save an update. So I want to make sure that it's automatically saved an update, right? So when we save it, it's going to create a brand new. Why is it important? Because I've added, look, this one right here, new payment, because I'm going to add in a brand new payment here, payment new. So when we do that payment new, it ensures that it is a brand new payment. In fact, I want to run that macro just in case. Uh, right up here, just in case this is going to clear out any. So what, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this payment ID, whatever's there, has been cleared out. Running the macro ensures that B11 will be a brand new one. So that's all I want to do is just to make sure. And I want to do it before just in case. So I'm going to put it anywhere up here. It's fine. Okay, great. So now that we have that, what I want to do is I want to determine what is that next due date. We're going to use select case for that. We're going to determine based on the frequency. If that frequency is daily, where that new due date is going to be based on the old due date plus one additional day. If it's weekly, we are going to set that brand new due date based on the old due date and one additional week. We're using WWs for weeks. And so if it's bi-weekly, meaning every other week, bi-weekly is every other week, then what I want to do is, again, update the due date based on every two weeks. If it's monthly, I want it every one month. If it's semi-monthly, I want it every half a month. Semi-monthly is not every two weeks. This is twice a month here. And so this is every two weeks. So there's a difference. Bi-monthly means every other month. So it would be every two months. And then annually be every once a year. Okay. All right. So cool. So that's how we do that. Very, very cool. And then so it's simply updating that. So then what we do is we create set the pay schedule to false once all that happens. So we just keep looping through this. And every time we are going to set a new one, we're going to set the information in and we're going to save it. And we're just going to keep looping through that. And it's going to save each one. The payment new brand new payment field and loading the list. We're going to reload the list with all those new payments as you see them populated. And lastly, we are going to turn on application screen updating. Cool. So that's all. And if we want to save a payment, all we said is the paid date. So we can set a paid date and then the paid amount. Let's say we paid more than we needed to on this one. And then we can save our update automatically. When we do that, it's going to populate that. You see the balance. Oh, we need to get that balance updated. You know what? I think we want to change this formula. Notice this formula is based on the above value. So I really should update this formula based on all the entire balance. And so what we can do is we can just make an update to this formula. I really want to do is I want to check the value to the left. If that does not equal empty, then what I want to do is I want to sum anything that was paid previously. So it's relatively simple. We just need to make the update. So what we'll do is we'll clear out this formula and I want to check here if the value to the left in this case, G19 does not equal empty. Then what we're going to do is we're going to then run a sum. So we're going to take that invoice total located right here. And that is going to be absolute F4. And we are going to subtract. I'm going to subtract the sum of what? The sum of everything that was paid before that, which in this case is G18 through G19. Now we want to make sure that they always start when we bring down the formula. That row G18 must be absolute. Okay. So if it's false, meaning there is a value, I'm just going to show empty. It's just fine. Now I'm going to take that formula and I'm going to bring it all the way down here as far as I think we went down to about here. And I'm going to paste those formulas directly here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we do show the value here. So now if we select on it, and that's exactly much better. So when we add individual payments, they will show up. Now I'll go ahead and I've had the code paused here while we're working on that code. So now if I select on an individual payment and I decide I want to make an actual payment, we'll set a pay date on one 20 on this one here, and we can set a payment amount of $500 here. We want to make sure that when we save it, that the balances get populated only for those. And that's exactly what I want. So we can see the balances go down accordingly, even if we make payments out of order. So that's perfect. Wow. This has been a really great training. In this training, we created this incredible invoice with installment payments from scratch, complete with new, save, update, 
adding and deleting new payments. We created this very cool payment schedule where the client could have a full copy of the payment schedule. Actually, we do want to do one thing, and that is going to be hiding this information. I'm going to hold down the control. I'm going to go into the custom formats, and I'm going to assign two semicolons to that, and that is going to hide it. We don't need to see those rows. Clicking OK. We were also able to print this invoice, use navigation previous and next, email the invoice, also to create a unique payment schedule, whether it's an automated payment schedule, we could create any number of payments at any frequency and starting on any date, or we could manually create and update payments. Thank you so much for joining us. I do appreciate your continued support. Don't forget to enjoy this on Patreon. I'll be making many more updates to this based on your suggestions and your feedback. Also, if you like these templates, so many great ways to support us, check out the AI tool pack. I've also got a, a developer's library. In fact, the ultimate developer's VBA library with over 500 macros now available for you to make your developing super fast. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.